It is podcast time. Oh my God, is it podcast time? We have an awesome, crazy off the rails episode today. We're going to need to hear from all of you out there, whether you're watching on YouTube, whether you're listening on Spotify, on Apple, on Google, because I know you're going to have some feedback on this. Why? Because we're going to Hollywood. It is the pop culture episode. We're talking Fast and the Furious, Smoking the Bandit, Cannibal Run, American Graffiti, Baby Driver. I, it's, it goes on and on and on. I don't even have time for my regular intro. I'm Christopher Smith, rambling about cars. And then the second half, maybe it's better. I think it's going to be better because we're talking about toys and collectibles and all the things that car people just love to collect. Whoo! We've got a long way to go. Yeah. Co-host Chris Bruce, why don't you tell us why there's four people here on the screen instead of just two? Absolutely. So it's going to be a fun show this week. Um, not that it's not a fun show every week, but just a little bit more lighthearted, a little bit more conversational, less hard research like I did last week. Um, so we've got some guests with us. We've got Motor One's global editor-in-chief, John Neff. He's back with us after joining us a few weeks back. Yep. Thanks for having me again, guys. And we have Brett Evans, Motor One senior editor, joining us for the first time. Yeah, it's great to be here. And Brett, as yeah. any first-time guest, you must take a questionnaire. Okay. So, bring it on. Smith, would you like to give them the first question, or would you like me to? Um, well, let me just start by saying that we did our little outline before the episode. So yeah, we'd like Brett, to do a little research or a little pr- preparation. Brett, Brett's, yeah, Brett saw the, uh, the, the outline, and he already answered the question, so he kind of knows the questions that are coming, so... We had to change some of those up, Brett, because this is a personality test here, buddy. Curveball, we're, surprise. We're, we're, we're getting right down to it. We'll, st- we'll start out some of the questions you already answered. Your, what's your favorite 80s car? Uh, I really like the... Oh, I don't even remember what I put now. Um, <laughs> well, good. <laughs> uh, uh, E28 M5 is a, is a pick for sure. Big fan of the E28 M5. Um Ferrari F40, just kind of a legend. Uh, that's very high on my list as well. Um, uh, oh, and also I was shopping. That's that's why I put this one down. I was shopping for this a few days ago. I would love a uh, 88 Porsche Carrera 3.2. That would be a very, very strong contender if I had the money. So Good, uh, good picks all the way around. How about your favorite 90s car? Um, the exact opposite. I would love a Buick Roadmaster Estate, 94 to 96. That'd be very high on my list. I have to Did applaud. You have one of those because I owned a '94 yeah. Roadmaster Estate. Yes. And, yeah, and I'm was, jealous. I've seen pictures, epic. and I want it. It was epic. Um, I mean, you could drift it for ten miles because it was ten miles long. It was so easy to control. Um, the original questions then had us asking your favorite movie, but we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So instead, yeah. you're in California, right? Mm-hmm. If you have a choice here, do you go convertible, hardtop, or T-top? Oh, you threw me a curveball with a T-top. I was very ready to say convertible, but I think it might have to be T-top now. That's it's definitely, a very tough. You definitely have to got to let the sun in one way or another, but uh, probably be the T-top just for the just for the vibes and the memes. And I uh, like my neighbor when I was a kid who took the T-tops off of his car, left them in the garage pulled back in after a nice Sunday drive and ran over his T-tops and destroyed them. Ooh. Oh, that's heartbreaking. That's better than having the T-tops fly out when you forget to latch them back in. True. Yeah. Because yeah. You, can, you can clean up the garage pretty easy. Cleaning up the guy's car behind you. Not that it happened to me. It didn't. Oh. Um, okay. Two more well, Two more quick questions. Yeah, Bruce, just so that our audience knows, one. what car do you own right now? Um, I have a 2006 BMW Z4 Roadster, which is why I was prepared to say convertible until he threw me the curveball with the T-tops. And how long uh, have you owned that? Had it two and a half years, and um, top goes down every single time. I live in California, so I'm really lucky in that regard. But, um, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I really, really love it. I've been a convertible guy ever since college, so um, don't see that well changing done. anytime soon. Well done. The, the gentleman that's also with us, John Neff, you love convertibles, don't you? No, no. Just, just, just like me and Brett, you love convertibles. I am, I'm, I'm, I, I'm anti-convertible. I think you could oh, say. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we won't hold that to, against to, you. To each, to each his own. But I don't see myself ever buying one. <laughs> All right. Last question. Here's another curveball. 
given the choice, are you going to catch some air in a Ram TRX or hit 200 miles an hour in a McLaren 765 LT? Mm. Well, I have caught air in a truck before. I've never gone 200 miles an hour before. So I'm probably going to say the McLaren. Um, I think I'd probably rather own the Ram, but if you're just giving me a one-time experience, I'm going to say the McLaren. Or has a curveball on a curveball, maybe you modify the Ram to go 200 miles an hour. That'd be scary. Yeah, That'd be goes. very dangerous. <laughs> that would, that would what, putting a jet engine in the yeah. class? <laughs> that, like, would, that would be awesome for like the five seconds you could get there before everything you could, went terrible. You could drive it off the side of a mountain and it might hit 200 miles an hour on the way down. <laughs> yeah. But all right. So now that we know everybody and we've introduced everybody, it's time to talk fun stuff. And for our first segment today, we are talking about the movies and TV starring cars that we like. You know, there are all sorts of TV shows, especially during the 80s and the late 70s. That was really the heyday for that. Um, that basically made cars their star. I mean, whether you're talking about Knight Rider, Smith is going to back me up here, Transformers. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. the people weren't really the stars. The cars were the stars. But so the cars were the people and the stars. Yeah, in, the, in Transformers' case, exactly. Um, so, yeah, so... What did you, you know, what do you guys like when it comes to car, movie, slash TV? What, what, what do you like to watch? What are your favorites? What, let are, you, me, what are you into? Let, let me open this up here uh, before we jump in, into each individual's in thing here. Because I'm, sure. Bruce, we're going to butt heads here because I'm a big fan of Ready Player One. I read the book. I watched the movie. The book is better than the movie. By but a I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a child of the 80s. And... I think anybody who was, remembers that era as well as I do, I mean, there's so much to love there. I was going back yesterday just for fun, right? Watching the movie that's that intro race scene has just like a bazillion vehicle references to, 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 to various movies. And, and I, I was looking around on the internet and I didn't really find anybody that, like wrote them all down anywhere. I mean, I've, I've seen this, some kind of hack and slash videos that look like came out before the movie came out. Here's a little rundown. Okay. Of, okay. Of, of vehicle references just in the beginning here. And I'm sure these will affect everybody here at some point. Mad Max interceptor. Come on. Yeah. Oh, that, that's my, that's one of my favorites. Bigfoot. And I'm talking like 80s, 80s, Bigfoot, yeah. 80s, Bigfoot. They still had the stripe on it. It still had the old writing, um, the bike from Akira, the you know, bike, you know, you know, anime, um, the A team van. I don't know if, <laughs> if everybody catches the A team van is in there. Maybe you didn't catch Christine is in there. The Steve. Oh, I missed that one actually. Yeah, Christine is in there. 57. Um, I think it's a 57 Plymouth Fury. Yeah. Um, the Eagle five. It, this wasn't in the race. This was uh, just after the race when they're what in is the, the Eagle five from Thunderbirds. When they're when they're in H's workshop, Eagle Five, the Winnebago from Spaceballs. <laughs> <laughs> I just caught that for the first time last night, and of course, Smoking the Bandit, Trans Am is in there. Um, I mean, that movie has so many references in there. Of course, and the the obvious Back to the Future, the uh, the DeLorean, the, the DeLorean, yeah, DeLorean, with with Kit's scanner from Knight Rider. I mean, yeah. Oh, that that's I mean, there's there's the launch pad right there. I'll open it up. Whoever whoever wants to go first. I, I mean, mean, tell us about some of your favorite stuff. I'll I'll go next. Uh, but but I I, I want to comment about Ready Player One because I think the reason I love that movie so much is it's it's like Who Framed Roger Rabbit in that it brings together all of these licenses from different pop culture properties, right? Into one movie where you never thought they'd be together for any, you know, it's like seeing Mickey and and um, Bugs Bunny together in, in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. So I love the movie for that reason. It's just such a odd sight to see all those cars in the same place. Um, but for me, when I'm when I'm thinking about movies and and TV that have to do with cars, I go all the way back to the very f to, to the to the moment I got into cars, I started thinking about cars and I was very young and it was actually an episode of Quantum Leap. It was the first season, episode nine. <laughs> 
Uh, this is the, the what is that eighty eight? Uh, you know what? I don't know the year. I didn't. I didn't catch that when I was looking I mean, it up. I mean, we're talking obscure stuff here. This is awesome. It, it was it, so. This is, so the episode was where Sam leapt into the secretary of a like a, a product uh, a, a product guy at a fictional car company who was kind of like a car designer. Uh, and I just remember seeing these scenes in their office where they're going through like like designs of future cars, and it's set in like the fifties. Uh, so they're showing these big oh. finned, you know, Cadillac looking cars, and and I just thought to myself like that's a job. Like it was it was just I didn't know that was a job. <laughs> And and I got the idea that I wanted to be a car designer uh, right then and there, and that lasted through high school that I wanted to be a car designer. But through that time, I just got into cars in general, and eventually went from more like car designing to writing. Uh, but yeah, it was that show. The show didn't really have anything to do about cars. It just happened nope. to be one one episode, and the episode was called. Um, I wrote it down here. Uh, what price Gloria? It was, it was the ninth episode of the first season and the first time that Sam ever jumped into a woman cause he played a secretary. Um, but aside from that, I think, uh, with movies and TV, my, you know, greatest hits are everybody's greatest hits. Their night rider, the general Lee, uh, the fall guy truck, the A team van, <laughs> uh, back in the future. I totally forgot about fall guy. Oh, what, fall what, guy. What, I love fall guy. What was th- that? Was a it's a it GMC was a GM something. something. Yeah, it was. Uh, was it a truck or no? It was a truck. It was a fall yeah, truck. It was, it was. It was a truck. He had like a it big. Was. It was like a lift on. It, it was lifted and it had the roll bar with the lights on top. I think and like oh, a, like man. a two tone beige on beige kind of paint yeah, job. Big old square body Chevy. Yeah, and I think they jump it in the opener. Um, yes, oh, and, I'm totally flashing back now. Yeah, just, it just, is a GMC K2500 wide side. Yeah, just it's awesome. Just and and uh, I think the remarkable thing is that era of the, like the 80s and the late 70s where cars were characters in TV and movies. And I, I lament that it's not happening now. Like it happened in so many pieces of, of TV and movies when we were young. And nowadays I just... I'm I'm trying to think around of like modern TV shows or or movies where like the car becomes the the big thing. And I just I I feel like it's very hard to think of of many really good ones. Who knows? Maybe 20 years from now, the kids now will think upon these things that I'm not thinking of. But uh, so I really enjoyed, although it was a it was a dark storyline when Jaguar appeared in Mad Men, and it ends up going oh, yeah. in dark places. Mm-hmm. But it was it, it was neat to see that. Um, but yeah, cars and modern stuff don't really appear in it. And it's like, it's, I mean, it, when we say the cars were characters, I mean, you take Kit, for example, that is literal. It yeah. talked, it was a character, but then even the other ones, uh, you know, like the DeLorean or the 18 van or, or whatever, they, they, they were present in every, uh, episode. They were the sidekick of the main characters, like, I just can't think of that in any modern day things. And, you know, I don't want to be an old curmudgeon and say, oh, kids are worse off today for not having that. But, you know, we always wonder why there's not as many kids getting into cars today. And I wonder if that's one of the reasons why. Could could probably argue, you know, like in terms of not necessarily being a character, but kind of that like perpetual background supporting act. Mm -hmm. Um, They did that in that 70s show, which is a little more recent. The the Vista Cruiser was, was in so many episodes and it be, kind of became like very emblematic of the show. Even that's um, 10 maybe, years old. I think it ended and it's 20, I, you know, it's probably 15 yeah. years old from debut. Well, so I can, I can save this here because I was a fan of supernatural that okay. ran yeah. for like 15, 16 yeah, seasons. Crazy it, long it, show. It, it, crazy long. It just wrapped up last year. And they have a 66 Malibu. 67 Impala is 67, 67 Impala. Impala okay. four door that was very much a character yeah. in that show. And in fact, they even did one episode. I think it wasn't last season. I think it was the season before they did one whole episode that was shot from the perspective of the car. All the, oh, really? Really? All the camera shots were inside the car. So you're kind of catching action going on outside the car and then towards Weird. the end uh, i mean they're you know the the car hits something and 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 okay you know dean's got it repaired again um i mean the the impala in that show i mean and 
And you're right, John. There aren't really any shows that are doing this anymore. Of course, Supernatural just ended. Um, but that car was such a big, such a big character in that show. Yeah, they did the episode. Values for the 67 Impala four doors have gone up since that show. They've gone up yeah. quite a bit. And I mean, once upon a time, nobody wanted a classic 60s muscle car with four doors. It was two doors or nothing. That show, I mean, there's there's pop culture for you. And um, and actually um, Jensen Ackles, the, uh, you know, one of the stars on the show put in his contract. He had it put in his contract when the show was over, he got the Impala and he took it home. Uh, well, that's and, cool. and, and, and he, I mean, he loves the car. Uh, he's posted some Instagrams of him with the car driving the car. So well done, Mr. Ackles. Yeah, definitely. So I came to this with a few video clips um, and I'm going to keep them short, but you know, so Honestly, the first thing that I think got me into cars as a kid, how many of you are familiar with Speed Racer? Yes. Sure. Oh, yeah. Mach 5 was in the uh, was in Ready Player One in yeah. the beginning. Well, we are watching the opening right now. Um, I know you guys don't have the audio, but this was the first show that really got me like this was the first car thing that I can remember being into. Um, yeah. And it's got an iconic uh, theme song and it's these kind of takes on these very mid 60s sports cars racing, as we can see here uh, <laughs> for anyone who is just listening to the audio version a fake Ferrari just blew up. Um, so wait, I I never watched Speed. I'm I'm aware of it. I've never watched it. What is going on? <laughs> like what? So what Speed is the Racer about? has he is a sports car driver. Okay. His dad, Pops Racer, created the ultimate sports car, and it's all, got all sorts of gadgets and whatnot. And he goes on races throughout the world. It's sixty sports car racing. Um, are, are there what kind of hijinks ensue? Are is he fighting crime and solving cases, or is he? No, are he's people, mostly racing. Like, are people are, trying to stop him? Does he have enemies? Yes. Okay. Yes. There yeah, are people there's... trying to stop him, um, but for the most part, it's just a guy racing, and his brother and his brother's pet monkey oftentimes are in the trunk of the car. <laughs> makes total sense. Yeah, monkey okay. makes everything better. I, I'm yeah. with you, John. I've actually I'm, I'm aware of it, but I've never really watched it before. I want to watch really. The... So it was. Uh, in syndication a lot when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah uh, me too. I remember seeing a lot of episodes just kind of like, you know, Saturday morning cartoons at like 6 a.m. before the new cartoons would come on. They would yeah. do reruns of Speed Racer, you know, at like 6 a.m. I remember that pretty vividly. So I, I was watched watching on Transformers on Cartoon <laughs> Network, like before the Toonami days in like the mid 90s at it was always just before my dad got home. So it must've been like four 30 PM on cartoon network. They would show speed racer reruns hmm. and I just ate it up. Uh, what about the new speed racer movie or the new wish? The one that was made, you know, five or six oh, years ago. Good, good or it. bad. It look good. I've never I watched actually it, but it reviewed it for my college newspaper. It's fine. It's visually it's stunning. The story's okay. It's cotton candy. It's there's no substance to it whatsoever, yeah. but it is, so fun to watch. I didn't oh, get it it's on so whatever the most high, like, I don't know if you have a 4K Blu ray player. If you do get it on that, yeah. whatever the most high res version you can get, that's what you need to watch it on. All right. And Christina Ricci looks like a like a live action anime character. She has yeah. such big eyes. She kind of just has that like very like childlike <laughs> appearance. So she's perfect in that role. It is John wonderful. Goodman plays a fantastic Pops Racer. Oh, he is a fantastic great. live action co or cartoon character. <laughs> yeah you know like you from a from a modern lens there's definitely some problematic things you gotta gotta keep an eye out for but um but you know within its time period and everything like that it's a oh it's wonderful i love it and right. just super quick one last thing this is the kind of the genesis of this whole thing smith and i after we got done recording last week we got started talking about Jackie Chan and Mitsubishi car chases. <laughs> we, should have, we should have kept recording that. We probably should have. We should but, have. So let's read. I don't let's know revisit. if just Jackie Chan loves Mitsubishis. I don't know if there was some sort of like advertising deal there, but there are a ton of Jackie Chan films where he drives Mitsubishis. Yeah, I can and think so of one. I, this is from the Jackie Chan film. Who am I? 
Um, and in this, he is in a Pajero doing some rallying. And it's just like, I mean, for lack of a better word, it's just like car porn. Like, this is just the Dakar rally, but yeah. Jackie Chan is at the wheel. And it's inexplicable, but it's also fantastic. Um, and Smith, I know what we're also, this is also from Who Am I, but where he drives an e-week. And just how weird, how many Mitsubishis appear in weird Jackie Chan films. And it's just fun. And so, how much so we miss... Drive a 3000 GT and Thunderbolt, too. Isn't that one of his... He drives a rides? bunch of Mitsubishis and Thunderbolt. I think you're right. He, a 3000 GT is among them. Like I know an Evo is among them, too. There's a bunch, yeah. I was thinking of Cannonball Run 2. Uh, Cannonball Run also, 2. Also, he he's in a Mitsubishi in that, too, yeah. I think. Yeah, and that's and that's an old Gallant, if I remember. Yeah. I, I remember right. Correct. But with like a jet engine, quote unquote. It was, it was almost like a Japanese version that, of Kit. Like it was a very high tech that Japanese was, car. That was yeah, the first was. cannonball run. And it was a, actually it was a Subaru in the first cannonball. Oh, okay. Was he in both? Was, yeah, he was he was in both. Okay. Um and, and the Subaru, it was like a little every time you saw the Subaru, it just made like this weird kind yeah, of like, jet mm-hmm. noise. Yeah. And it was super fast and yeah. Great stuff. Brad, well, why, why don't you why, why don't yeah. you take us next year? Well, I was I was just feeling very dark after that ghost car that we just watched tear up. <laughs> yeah, um, it was dark. Mine is mine is pretty much the polar opposite. The the car that got me into cars, the movie that got me into cars was Disney's The Love Bug, uh, the original. And watching Jim Douglas hoon around in a beautiful little cream white sixty three Volkswagen just kind of like set the course for me. Um, I actually like the sequels a lot better. My favorite is either uh, Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo or Herbie mm-hmm. Goes Bananas. Uh, Herbie Goes Bananas is great because he ends up in South America floating around the Amazon, I think, and gets pulled out of the Amazon by a little boy who becomes his best friend. So it's just like the most ridiculous, inane. If, if a Volkswagen is the main character of a car, was it ridiculous enough? He just gets in the most unusual and weird situations. And uh, I, well- I love it. And talk about cars as characters. I mean, yeah, that's, um, yeah. That, that's not a side. Kick. That's you, the star of the movie. And, and how can you get more endearing than a, than a bug? Mm-hmm. And Herbie goes to Monte Carlo where he, I mean, can, can you say that he hooked up with the Lancia? He did. I, yes, I, I, yes, mean, yes, I mean, I mean, I mean, at, at the end they were opening doors and they were touching doors and, and, and the you best, know, like the best throwaway line in that movie too is, is um, when they have to kind of like, talk to Giselle, the Lancia, and they have to kind of like explain to her that, Hey, Herbie's kind of a cad. Like they've already had to, they've had to have this conversation with a Thunderbird <laughs> and two Ferraris and three, like he's kind of a ladies man. He's, and they he's kind, kind of, of a player. Like, they kind of have to talk Giselle into like driving the race because he's not going to wait for her. And, uh, and I just love, yeah, I love the idea of this adorable little Volkswagen being a, being kind of a little, little player and also thwarting a jewel fest in the process. Like, it's just peak 1970s Disney camp, and I love it. I yeah, remember seeing choice. those. My, my parents showed me those when I was uh, when I was little. The, I mean, those could be actually, if I think about it, you know, my first real car movies. Yeah, it was. I, I remember my mom would like back when we didn't even have a VCR. She would like rent a VCR and bring home Herbie from the from the video rental store. You could rent a VCR, on. like yeah, oh, yeah. I don't yeah. remember that. I, I, I very I very think vaguely I remember we had one, but I think I remember seeing that it's like wow, you could you could mm-hmm. actually rent those. Yeah, yeah, it was just like you know three three wires to plug in and you're good to go. But um, uh, yeah, I, I very vaguely remember her bringing home a VCR from the rental store and popping in Herbie, and that was that was how I got my start. Still, my favorite automotive uh, series for sure. My favorite automotive uh, movies, quality so, quality I- stuff. I, Brett, I've got good news for you. For anyone who has Disney Plus, The Love yeah. Bug, Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo, Herbie Goes to Bananas, and Herbie Rides Again are all on Disney Plus. So if anyone hey. needs a quadruple feature, there you go. And you can make it a quintuple feature because even though it doesn't, it's not a classic, um, Herbie Fully Loaded is still a solid Entry. Oh, is that is that the is that the new one with that's uh, the Lindsay the Lohan? With, uh, yeah, thank you for saying that. In NASCAR, he finds yes. a way to they find some loophole that allows him to race in NASCAR, and you know it's not a good movie, but neither were the originals. Let's be honest, and so right. it, 
it fits in with the pantheon you guys, that's fine you guys are giving me a long list of things to watch i <laughs> want to watch all of these this things cool right after nascar this. makeover that he's got the little like lip spoiler at the end yeah, I mean, yeah. he's got a gurney <laughs> flap he's got some wide wide vendors it's, it's pretty cool he gets a total you NASCAR. Make, you're makeover. convincing me that I need to see this movie, yeah. and I've never seen Herbie for fully loaded. So go ahead. It, I, it's I think it's before well, Lindsay Lohan went like really crazy. It is. It oh was no, whatever, yeah. Whatever yeah. last it was pre crazy Lindsay. Yeah, and it's not a good movie at all. But neither are any of the movies that we've discussed today. No. <laughs> exactly. Much, no. <laughs> like that's the thing. Like even like I don't know, Smokey and the Bandit, good or bad. Like I. I like it, but I don't know if it's a yeah. good movie. It's oh, it's totally not a good movie, but I mean, it's it's an icon. I mean, it's, I, it's an iconic movie. I, I find most of the movies that I loved when I was 10, 15 uh, do not hold up. Like when I rewatch them again through my adult eyes, my, my post 40 eyes, I'm like, I see what I liked then. I but I don't like I wouldn't enjoy it fresh right now if it was the first time I've ever seen it. But I have sure. so many good memories attached to them that honestly, I I buy movies from my childhood, like these car movies on iTunes when they're like uh, on sale for five dollars. Not because I ever intend to like watch them fully. I just want them in my collection. I just want to own them. So it's, I, I have a lot of buying, movies like that. You're buying part of your childhood. Back. Exactly. Exactly. You're and buying, if I ever want to watch them or watch a scene, they're there. Yep. I'm, I'm wearing my rad racing. Can you see it on the camera? Wearing oh, yeah. my rad racing t-shirt. Just, I, I had to have that t-shirt because rad 1986. I was a yep. biker kid. Come on, man. And, and you know, you don't want to talk about obscure. The prize in that movie was a C4 Corvette for winning mm-hmm. Hell Track. Um, and Lori Lachlan you know, before, before the scandal, right. before prison, oh, I, I was in love with her in the biggest way. And, I watched that movie like two weeks ago. I and, still, and, that's a good movie. And in the parade, she was driving that, I think it was like a GMC, like, like a little S 15 with the, with the bikes on the roof. Mm-hmm. That's man. That's all. I gotta be careful. That's a whole other thread. I can go down. Brett, Brett, what else you got? Anything else? Um, I mean, those are that's my car movie for sure. I know we've got a few others that we they still need to talk about, but Love Bug was the one that really kind of, kind of, even well, even up until um, so I was not, a teenager. Like we could go on this for a while. I'm sorry, oh, yeah. but just again, super <laughs> quick, I have to share this because it's one of my favorite episodes of Mystery Science Theater 3000. Oh boy, it's called Master Ninja. Um, it is, it was a pilot made for some network, some American network in the eighties. It stars a guy who drives a van, who has a pet hamster and who has a a mentor who is a ninja. And I just want you guys to watch this because it is this guy and it is a young Demi Moore engaging in a, uh, car chase in his van. So sounds totally normal. What's that? Dem- wow. Yeah, it's, this is, you're gonna see a young Demi Moore. I don't know. I mean, she's got to be in her early twenties at this point. Uh, she she's young. Um, again, no audio like all of our stuff. But um, so you Ooh, see, nice van. <laughs> look at the van. G- the GMC, van. GMC full size van. So I mean, do, do you graphics. guys also geek out now at, at older when you see older movies or TV shows like this and just like the completely normal cars? Yeah. Oh, like, totally. Like, like, I mean, like what we're seeing just here. Absolutely uh, pristine, beautiful. That's what I yeah, that's what I geek out about is that they're they're in good condition because you can't find them like that. Today. So when you see now. them in their original form back in the 70s or 80s, it's like that's what they look like new. There's a great Albert Brooks movie where in the very beginning of it, I don't remember what it is, but he dies in the beginning of the movie and goes to heaven. And um, Defending your life? Something like that. Yes. Def- yeah, defending yeah, yeah. Okay. your life. Defending and, your life. And at the very beginning of the movie, he um, goes to the BMW dealer to pick up this new 325i convertible that he's bought, E30 325i. And um, he shows up and there's a, seven, a 735, I think, sitting on mm. the showroom. And he thinks that's his car and he gets really excited. And then he's given the 325 and he's like, oh, man, why'd you show me this awesome thing when I have to drive away in this piece of crap? And it's just really hilarious seeing a brand new BMW dealership from the 19, early 1990s because all of those cars are destroyed or slammed. Like yeah. there's, no diff- there's no in between. They're either like rusting away or they are slammed and stanced. 
And so it's really weird seeing like a, like an urban, young urban professional going into a BMW dealer and that's what he walks away with. It's, it's really kind and of a lot of fun. Super fun fact about that movie, either Criterion Collection just put it out or it's coming out in the coming months and they announced it. So oh, for really? any Defending Your Life fans, you will soon, wow. you can either order it now, you can definitely order it now. Um, I wonder yeah. if we can find that scene on YouTube. I'd love to see that. Uh, yeah, we'll have to look. If we can, we'll put it in the, in the description. Definitely. Well, well, speaking of speaking of obscure, I've I've got a few things to talk about. I I kind of started this all off with the Ready Player One, and I mean I'm with everybody else. I mean, come on, Back to the Future was so big for me, and the DeLorean was just so so awesome. Um, Dukes of Hazard, you know, John, you were talking yep. about how things have changed in your post forty eyes, and I can't watch Dukes of Hazard anymore. I it was I was so in love with it as a kid. Um, you know, I caught it towards the end of its run, and I, I remember telling my mom, "Let's drive through the cornfield so we can so we can jump the car," <laughs> and and not not realizing that that's not how people actually drove. But I just I can't watch that anymore. It's just it just it's too campy. It's too yeah. silly. And and I'm part of me is sad by that, but another part of me is just like, well, hey. Then, I think know, I that, think that was that was the time. You know, TV, yeah, TV and movies have changed in the last. 10, 20 years where there's like gritty realism. And when you go back to that campiness that when you were a kid thought, Oh, life is really like that out there. That's mm-hmm. you didn't know that was campy. You just thought mm-hmm. that was how exciting and fun life really was. Right. And, but nowadays, you know, we got the Sopranos. We know life's a hellhole <laughs> that we're all just trying to endure. Yeah. And, and yeah, you watch uh, some of these we don't fun want, TV shows. It's like, we just, don't want the silly escape anymore. You know? Yeah. Yeah. We don't, we want the gritty one, you know, I, and you know what? I, speaking of silly, I also got to say smoking the bandit. I mean, I, I come from three generations of, of truck drivers. Um, my brother's truck driver. I consider him a, a different generation for me just because there's a big age difference there. Um, so seeing smoking the bandit and my father, his CB handle was actually snowman long before smoking the bandit. So nice. there is that, there is that special tie there. And of course we know how that movie elevated the uh, the 77, 78, 79, really, really all those Pontiac Trans Ams to just superstardom to where, I mean, to get a, a nice special edition, you know, a, a, a Trans Am SE from 77, you're talking six figures. I mean, yeah. that's I mean, that's that's the that's the power of, of pop culture right do you, there. Do you think one could make the argument that Pontiac wouldn't last wouldn't have lasted as long as a brand as it did had it not been for the success it had in pop culture with Smoking the Bandit, with Knight Rider, with the, these with, and, and maybe those are the only two. Maybe, But but maybe there's more. But, you know, I, I think these pop culture uh visibility that some of these cars get can be huge for their brands i mean obviously the mustangs and everything the corvettes and everything but if you're a smaller automaker like pontiac and you get your car in a big movie like that uh pontiac and the band or uh smoking the bandit or or kit man that's free advertising that oh you, for you sure could, you could never pay for well when you start looking at movies from that perspective and even television shows to take take a closer look, everybody out there, you'll start to notice in some TV shows or in some movies, there is an overabundance of vehicles. One from, kind of car, from yeah. One particular manufacturer. And yeah, I mean, that's where it's the really honestly, is. it's annoying when I when I notice it. Yeah, uh, it, yeah. Oh, it, it, it can be totally annoying. Yeah, but like, it takes like you out of it. it. It's so like just the, super like quick matrix. example. Does anyone notice that Scarlet Witch drives a Buick Regal and was confused by that? Not a Regal, a Verano. Oh, is it a Verano? It okay. is a Verano. Yeah. Okay. I totally I caught that. Oh my! I can't believe you said that, Bruce. Oh my God! I thought and it was, it was the red. One that caught that. Yeah. It's it's like it's like burgundy. Really? Yeah. Scarlet freaking witch drives a Buick. Come on. It could have been a rental. A lot of Veranos yeah, in the rental suites. Maybe, maybe. I mean, why? Why doesn't she just fly around? Well, we're, that'd we're, be too we're, obvious. Anyway, we're, 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 super, we're, we're, super getting, quick. We're getting I a little off. I couldn't find the dealership scene. I could find Albert Brooks driving the BMW. Yeah. So we are just going to take a super quick moment here. <laughs> you are right. Albert Brooks in a th- uh, wow, E30 that guy looks 325i. Like a, that guy uh, looks like a BMW driving douchebag. Well, All right. He's well, about to hey. die. Oh, <laughs> so is he? I don't know the movie. That's the plot of the movie. Yeah, he's going to well, die any he second it. now. So, but yeah. So there you hey, go. There it is. When I, I see that car, color my the E30 I had. 
When I see that car, I think of uh, Beverly Hills 90210, and the blonde had that car, but in red, the BMW okay. convertible. Yeah. Mm. I'm trying to think which blonde. Look at that. Jenny Garth? Jenny Garth did, yeah. I forget okay. her character. Ke- what, was it I Kelly? I don't know the character name. Yeah, I can't remember. Well, I tell you what. You want to keep it BMW? You want to keep it BMW from the 80s? Let's keep it BMW yeah. from the 80s. What do you got? Oh, I was a, yeah. I was a huge, huge Moonlighting fan. Right. I was so in love with Sybil Shepard. She drove the 635 CSI E24. I remember seeing this car and just being completely in love with it. And and yeah, let's take a moment and look at Bruce Willis with hair. I mean, come on. But let's uh that brief let's, moment. Let's, let's let's put this in motion here. Ooh, nice. Gorgeous. Yeah, with the, with the tall look at that. the tall kidney grill. <laughs> look at that car. Look at the Cadillac. I like, I like that wait, MG wait. that he just cut off too. Yeah. What's, oh, that's a Thunderbird. Oh, that was a Thunderbird, yeah. That wasn't a market? That wasn't a Lincoln? I don't Look at that, though. Think it might have been, but anyway. Ooh, and then the LA the Reservoir. Down. Yeah, everybody drives the LA uh, <laughs> the, the Reservoir. Yeah. I, I Greece. It's a common thoroughfare. I can tell you from personal experience, I'm on it every other week. Yeah, <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know much about cars at, at this point. I, 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 was still, I was still a youngin'. But I loved that car. I loved the way it looked. I didn't. I, I thought it was like some supercar. I mean, I I know not. I mean, it, it was it was good for the time. Yeah, for the time. It was a pricey car at the time. Yeah. It, it, it was a pricey car. I've been so close to getting an E twenty four so many times just because of moonlighting and and maybe Sybil Shepherd in moonlighting. I've <laughs> I've I still watch. This is one of the shows that. It, it was campy back then, but I can still watch you can it. Still watch and, it. And, and, I, I don't and know love if I it can. now. I can still no, watch it. Holds it holds up it actually. Now. It's really well written. We 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 used to watch that show when we visited my uh, my grandma every Sunday. I think <laughs> they they broke the fourth wall a lot, which I which I kind of dug. Um, and I thought I thought David Addison was just the coolest guy ever. Um, well, and, and, and he drove that car. Um, I and I also I got to give a quick shout out because we haven't said it yet, and I know we'll get hate mail if we don't. Um. The Fast and the Furious, yeah, like it, like it or not, that franchise has inspired so, so, so many people to embrace cars, to get into cars. I remember going to see the the first movie in the theater, and I mean the the parking lot was like a car show. Nobody would have predicted that the series, the franchise, would have gone this long. Especially I'm, after like kind of the doldrums of the third and fourth one, things right. got kind of rough there for a little while. Right, but but I mean, you know what? They kind of recast it into this crazy yeah. adventure series with yeah. cool cars. And hey, you know what? There are a lot of cool cars in the franchise. The storylines have been crazy. I I I have the entire series except the most recent movie. I just couldn't bring myself to buy that movie just because. <laughs> I I'm, I'm sorry, sending out. Ford Crown Victoria taxis that are somehow automatically under full autonomy when everything is still mechanical. It's like, sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't make that ridiculous leap, but they've brought back Han. Yeah. If they can bring back Giselle, Gal Gadot. <laughs> You've brought this I, up so I many don't, times. I, I don't, don't think Wonder Woman's care. coming back. I think she's too expensive for him. Yeah, I, th- I, th- no, hey, oh. Uh, I, knew it was I know, I know, I know Gal Gadot Gal listens to this podcast. I know she listens. She does. Come back to us, please. You, you don't need to be, you don't need to, you're Wonder Woman in the Fast series. In, in defense of the whole franchise, what I, what I really like about Fast and the Furious is it started out in like the, the tuner scene, mm-hmm. uh, street racing, Japanese uh, culture of cars. And which is, which is, was a great culture to explore. And they, they did a fun, maybe silly campy version of it but but it was cool but then it kept broadening uh the cars that it exposed people to to uh american muscle classics and 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 then supercars and then so it 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 started off in like one corner of of car fandom and it expanded to include all the cars that everybody loves and yeah, it's gone off the rails like nine different times, but uh, <laughs> it is. How long was that runway? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. That's, that's, that's a great point. Uh, but I mean, uh, look, it's one of those movies you can sit down, watch once, be happy, and then never watch it again. And that's fine. I think we're going to have to come back to this. There's so yeah, much this is a topic. To talk about. Too much. 
Yeah. <laughs> we'll have a whole why don't we have a whole episode on just Fast and the Furious one day? Oh, easily we could. Let's we wait could, until the new one could, comes out and a week before we'll do it. I we'll, we'll, no we'll get Gal as a guest. I can I I got her on speed dial. I can I She's can listening her, to us now. So She's listening right now. I can get her on speed dial. We can have her on the uh, on the podcast. By the way, but, I believe her last name is pronounced Gadot. Yes, I was I I, I thought it was Gadot. Gadot. Uh, Whenever she says it it's Gadot. But anyway, we need to reference the people who actually <laughs> listen to the show and who <laughs> send us emails listens. and okay, who okay. want to talk with us. Okay. So I, I, I'll start this out. Um, Nathan Mondor, who is our buddy in Canada, he has emailed us several times and he's a great guy. Nathan, I've edited your email down a little bit. It's not that things weren't like helpful or useful or cogent or anything like that. It's we just, just knew where buddy. this episode was going to yeah. go, man. <laughs> yeah. So I'm reading from Nathan right now. I learned a lot about Mitsubishi in this one. I was not aware that they had such a partnership with Chrysler. It was really interesting for you guys to talk about it. Uh, you also talked about the IS 500 F sport performance, and you said that you're not a big fan of the grill. Personally, I don't mind it. I think it's because I grew up knowing that only this grill on Lexus cars. Nathan is, I believe, 16. Nathan, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, bud, but I know you're a teenager. Um, anyway, I cut the grill in half to see how it would look. I think it looks okay. It's not. Uh, it's a step in the right direction for their design. And that was so simple. I also transformed transformed it into a real F-Sport model. So anyone who's reading this, we will have Nathan's two renders in our post so you can see what he thinks of it. Um, I don't own any, or I'm sorry, I don't own an amazing car to share with you. But I do know a few interesting cars from my country that you probably don't. The Brickland SV1. Sorry, Nathan. I know about that one. We got the, the Brickland. The rest of your list, though, bud, I've got no clue on. The Magnum Mark V, the Felino CB7, the Manic GT, and the HTT Plethiore. It, are we it, are we being Rick rolled right now? Because this sort I, of no, I, I've, I've, I've heard, heard of I've heard of some of these. Yeah. So, but Nathan, you're right. At some point, we should do you know a little bit of a segment on Canadian cars because sure. there's some interesting stuff there. GM had its own dedicated uh, Canadian brand. It was Acadia or Arcadia. I forget which. Um, there's been some interesting stuff there. So. Yeah, thanks for your uh, input. Thanks for sending us those renderings. Anyone who's listening to this, you'll be able to see them in the post at motorone.com. Um, and Smith, do you want to take our second letter? Yeah, yeah, we, we got a, an email from Blake, and Blake's emailed us before. Um, mm -hmm. Good good dude, good dude. Was talking about the, We were talking about the McLaren hybrid. Uh, talking Last about week, the, yeah. The, the Artura. Um, Blake mentions that uh, you know he, he thinks it weighs at least 3,400 pounds. Actually, Blake, I got to say, McLaren has said directly it's 3,303 pounds. Yep. Um, that's what they're putting on their press site. So that, that, that's what they got on their that's press their site. their number. Drain all the fluids out of it, and it's even lighter. It's like 3,000 even just, just, just about. So yep. it, it is pretty light for a hybrid. Um, he says, do you think journalists get excited about these hybrid supercar things more so than the readers? That's a, actually a really good question. I know you guys get to drive them for free and everything. Actually, Bruce and I, we're, we're part of the yeah. daily news team. So, so yeah, Blake, we, just we, we don't, we don't get the, we don't get the free cars. No, Blake, just to let you and other listeners know, Smith and I do not get press cars. I've worked at motor one since 2017 or 2018. I got our long distance or yeah, our long distance, um, long Passat term. wagon. I went on a trip for Buick and I got to test Lexus LS safety tech. Those are the three cars I've driven since I've been here as part of that job. So, so, so no, yeah, we, we do not get press cars, bud. We're not part of that, but I, I know John and Brett, I mean, you guys have yeah. certainly driven all kinds of cars. And, and John and actually doesn't get press cars anymore either. We, it's kind of a wall well, garden. It's kind of sort of with editorial and not. So Yeah, and it, it's interesting uh, because uh, the end of his letter talks about uh, how um, – uh, he doesn't get the appeal of having a heavier vehicle with a worse sounding engine, assuming he means the hybrid part, uh, and a much more advanced computer system shuffling power everywhere to make you look like a hero when you just aren't. Uh, I don't know how old he is, but he says, I guess at a ripe old age, I appreciate a good engine much more so than a battery pack and computers. And I, 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 I wanted to finish his letter because 
Um, I, I consider myself more of a futurist. I actually own an electric car and I love them. And two, um, right? I own two. Yeah. 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 And a, a Tesla and a little Spark EV. Um, and EV. I, I can't wait until the future comes more and more. Like, I love that electric cars are here. I think they're they're awesome and they're fun and they have their own personalities. That doesn't mean I want every uh, gas powered car in the world to disappear um, or to you know stop being sold or anything, but I think it's cool when automakers start um, entering um, the segment of electrification, whether it's through hybrid or full electrification and whether it's a supercar manufacturer or Volkswagen, I think it's, it's super cool. There's never been this level of innovation and experimentation and new technology in cars, uh, since really since the yeah. gas engines overtook electric, uh, back in the, you know, tens and twenties of, of the last century. So, uh, I think it's super cool. Well, and they've kind of proved, John, that, um, you know, you can really make a very passionate and exciting electric car. You know, Tesla has been building fast electric cars for a long time, but then the Porsche Taycan Turbo S, like, I don't know if anyone out there watching has, has heard videos of these things launching or anything like that. They sound like spaceships and they're just <laughs> it's as cool. exciting and as, it's, different, yeah, it's, like, it's just as it's much of a thrill cool. ride as anything else. Exactly. It's, it's just kind of a different, different way of getting your thrills and, you know, I agree. I like a big V8 or I like a, you know, a high strung, um, you know, supercar engine as much as the next person, but, but there's, there's room for both. Yeah. There, I mean, the, the, the act of driving and enjoying the drive isn't just about sound. I mean, I've talked to people that will refuse to drive anything that doesn't have a manual transmission. And it's like, well, are you a driving enthusiast or are you a stick enthusiast or somebody won't drive a car unless it's got a nice throaty V8. It's like, well, are you a car enthusiast or are you just an audiophile? You like to hear that certain sound. Yes, of course it all comes together. Um, but there are different, uh, I mean, there are different ways to enjoy different groups of performance. Now my take on hybrids, I see, I really see hybrid in, in a performance aspect has just another power adder like a supercharger, like a turbocharger, it's taking the gasoline engine that's in there and it's injecting more power into it. Now it's adding more weight in the process, but unlike you would normally have with a turbocharger or a supercharger, you're not going to take a big benefit or a big penalty in miles per gallon. You actually yeah. have a power adder that if you want, will also be very, very economical for you when you want that. And I don't think there's one single person in the world who enjoys spending money for fuel. So when, when you, <laughs> when you look at it that way, I, I mean, I, I legitimately see hybrids has a power adder for a performance aspect, but then it also has the added benefit of you can use it in an efficient manner when you want. And it, to me, it, it's sort of a best of both worlds thing. Yes. It does add a lot of weight, well, I, it, I mean, it, it, look at it when it's done well, like in the Acura NSX, right? Mm -hmm. it, the, the marriage of combustion and electricity in uh, in a vehicle that's both a supercar and and <laughs> and pretty much a daily driver as well. Like it's it is a best of all worlds kind of thing when it mm -hmm. when it's done well. And, well, and, and, and to, go, go ahead, guys. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, so I, I say to the uh, to the um, weight point. Um, 50 years ago, every single car had a cast iron engine, and now you get a cast aluminum engine with magnesium parts and stuff like that in your run-of-the-mill Honda Accord. And so um, battery battery weight, battery technology is going to become more compact and lighter as the mm -hmm. time goes on. And, and, you know, this is just the price that we pay for being, you know, early in history. We're going to end up with slightly heavy power adder hybrid technology, just like you were saying, Chris. Also, it shifts the center of gravity low. Uh, yeah. So even though you're adding more weight, if you can control that weight, uh, it can lead to a lot better handling. So as like, far as uh, we're not trying to be a dick. We're, it's not like yeah. we disagree with you, but you're not necessarily wrong. There are points to your side that having a purely combustion engine does save weight, just like having a purely electric engine saves weight, and that there is a compromise between having a hybrid there. So you're not necessarily wrong. We just have, it's, a, it's just a difference of opinion. We thank you for, you know, emailing us. Sorry. You know, let us know what you think. You know, if well, you think and, we're and, wrong, we'll, yeah. we'll let update us know. things. 
shoot us an email podcast at motor one.com. I'll also just do a shout out because Blake sent us pictures of his car. He yeah. actually has a really a very sweet, nice challenger. He's got a really nice. sweet 2020 challenger uh, scat pack with a six speed manual. Oh, that's, a, boy. that's a, that's, that's a boss yeah, car. Right man. It's, it's a little heavy. I hate to say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, zing. zing. Okay, we need to we need to move this on because we're yeah, before we're Blake late. tracks us all down. <laughs> and no, no, hey, you know what? As we've been saying the last few episodes, we want to we want to learn more about you, listeners. We want to learn more about your cars, your car stories. Um, I see in, in a future episode, I see us actually compiling a lot of these together to talk more at length about what our listeners are doing, what our listeners are driving. So, Blake, thank you very much for sending this in. We're going to come back to that in a future episode. Right now, we still have more more nerd stuff to do, man. And uh, and I'm sitting here surrounded by toys and die cast cars, and I have pictures on my walls of cars. the The second half of this, every single person who is into cars has some other little hobby that relates to cars that keeps them happy that keeps them going if you're watching on youtube you can probably see the wall behind me that's filled with cars and a steering wheel and and robots that'll be another another thing for another time so yeah that's the thing that a real world car is going to cost at the absolute minimum several hundred dollars if not several thousand dollars a matchbox car is a buck at the grocery store Mm. and you know that that part of the hobby, and I've said this before, that loving to play automotive video games or loving Matchbox Hot Wheels or Lego or anything like that, that's all part of the automotive hobby. It's not, one is not more valid than the other. Just because you're in your garage wrenching on a 66 Chevelle versus putting together a Lego model, it's, we live under a big tent here. The person wrenching on the 66 Chevelle may not be putting together a Lego model, but I guarantee that person will have some sort of scale model somewhere in their house. And that's it's also just about, about passion that both of those people have passion for cars and they're maybe mm-hmm. expressing it differently, but it's still there. And I think that's really important to point out. It is. Well, it's important to point out, and it's also important to embrace because yeah. uh, there's there's so many ways to enjoy cars. Let's jump into it here. Um, let's start with you, Brett. What what are some of your just like little car hobbies, collectibles? Well, what, what what keeps you what keeps you into this? Well, like about just about everyone who does anything with cars, uh, definitely diecast models. Um, my uh, my boyfriend and I recently moved in together, and the biggest challenge was combining our 118th model collection. <laughs> I feel your pain. I feel your pain. Have, L- label them. I have a, I have a, well, I have a few, and he has like dozens. And so all of a sudden, nice. our our living it's room like became a bastion, a bastion to to diecast cars, um, and then Legos too. We just got done building the uh, the Lego Porsche 911, and we did kind of a fun. Um, turbo targa hybrid you can pick one or the other and we ended up doing both kind of like getting a little creative and that was really fun um and then um i also have just like tons and tons of uh old magazines i've got like some really cool 50s and 60s sports car sports car illustrated road and track just like some really bitching old old stuff that um, my brother gave me a few years ago for christmas and it kind of just like Set set a new set a new obsession in motion, and uh, I I my, I'm pretty sure my mom kicked him when I opened this gift because all of a sudden it was like oh crap now we're gonna have to find places for all this stuff until he moves out of my house and that was very much the case until I moved out they had boxes and boxes of my oh, wow. crap just sitting all over the place so tons of tons of old magazines and and that's kind of what um, what got me started on this life path is reading old old issues of road and track and and reading Peter Egan and being like oh my gosh someone actually does this for a living and that was kind of <laughs> that was kind of what got me started back in the you know a few years magazines ago. I totally that totally slipped my mind for a while I was I was collecting a lot of old motor trend and car and driver yeah. stuff. um and then it just got to the point where it's like I collect too much stuff, man. So, yeah. so, the, so the mag the magazine's got to go. Neff, 
Well, I mean, uh, funny, mine uh, has to do with magazines as well. Uh, like Brett, I uh, I bought uh, every car magazine from the big four car magazine uh, publications throughout the 90s, and I still have them all, like wow. thousands in my garage. Uh, but in addition to car magazines, when I was a kid, I also bought radio control car magazines. So RC oh. car action. Oh, and my God. And yeah. it's funny, it's funny, Bruce, because you said, you know, like a real car costs thousands of dollars and a, and a Hot Wheels cost two bucks. My problem was that even though a real car was thousands of dollars, an RC car was still hundreds of dollars, which I sure. didn't have either. So I coveted RC cars just like I coveted real cars and I read about them in magazines. And, and so I still follow RC cars as an adult, although it's funny because I still don't own one. I'm still like a little kid with my nose pressed <laughs> against the window. Uh, but, but yeah, I still have uh, hundreds of RC car magazines magazines too. Uh, Lego, obviously, although it's funny, I wasn't into Lego as a kid, but I am as an adult. And I think it's because the, the level um, of how intricate and impressive the car sets are today is so high. Mm -hmm. And it, well, that wasn't the case when, when we were young, they were just simple. They weren't even, well, they didn't have licenses either. So they, they, you know, it wasn't like there was a Ford Mustang kit. Nowadays you have the speed champion small sets, and then you have the creator large sets. And both of them are just incredibly detailed and just amazingly designed. So I, I've bought almost every one that's come out. I have the Porsche one too. Although unlike Brett, I keep most of mine boxed and, and don't put many of them together. Although I did here, I did put this one together. The, um, the, Audi, oh, look at that. Audi Sport yeah. Quattro. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is one of the newer Speed Champion <laughs> ones. The yeah. yeah, yeah. the same thing in the box. No, the, okay. For the listeners, we have to explain the irony here because that is, that is jo ironic. John is being very, very modest. How big is your Lego collection? I mean, I have two or three thousand dollars worth of Lego sets in boxes in a closet. And, uh, and they're and they're in that. That's the thing that they're in boxes. You never, never open them. Open. No, no. Except, are they except are they investments for you, John? Are you like planning on? Are you like keeping not, them mint so that you can sell them later? Or it's just the kind of collector I am. Really, I'm like that with my car magazines too. Like I, I was known as a Nazi when I was a little kid with my car magazines because if they were sitting on the uh, coffee table and somebody put a drink on them, I would flip out. Like my car magazines and, had to stay in pristine condition. And if and, one came in the mail that was ripped, I had to go to the store and buy a new one off the shelf because that one would be perfect. So I have some duplicates of some. And, and I'm just like that with like, if I'm not going to open it, then yeah, it's going to stay in perfect condition. Am I ever going to sell them? I don't know. I, you know, they're not really investments. I just, I don't know. And, and I don't feel like this is going to sound weird, but like, I don't feel like putting together Lego all the time. Like sometimes I was, I have been inspired by these new speed champions because their proportions are so much better now that they are two minifigs wide instead of one minifig. Um, so yeah, they're, they're way better now. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is video games, racing games, uh, but racing games didn't touch me, I think, until they got real. And I'm talking about uh, virtual racing uh, on the Sega. What was it called? The 32 32X, yeah. The 32X, and they brought Virtual Racing, which was like the first polygon-based racing game for a home console. Yep. yep. Uh, uh, and then uh, also before that in the arcade, um, Iron Man Stewart's Off-Road Championship. We've discussed uh, that before. <laughs> yeah, that was yes. sprite-based, but it was still amazing and kind of realistic. And then, of course, the Gran Turismo series, the early one. What was the one we all played? The second or third? Two, probably. Two? two? Yeah, I think two, two was or the three. one. Where I had like a 1,400 horsepower uh, Mitsubishi Eclipse yeah. that I that could win. Like two. I could I could just win everything with by holding the accelerator. Yep. I didn't even need to steer. I could just bounce Jumping off the wall. into every bounce wall along the way. Yes, yep. Didn't matter. Uh, that all that stuff. I mean, I agree. That's all part of the automotive enthusiast experience. As a kid, it's a gateway drug. As an adult, it's just another branch. Well, and well, think you could about. Probably, go ahead. Go ahead, Brett. Go ahead. You Brett. got it. You could probably credit. Um, Gran Turismo for like a lot of, uh, a lot of like modern, like, um, this, this like fascination with JDM cars because oh, we yeah. didn't get the, we didn't get the evolution or the WRX until 2001, 2002. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we didn't get the skyline until 2007 or was it 2008. We didn't get the, the GTR. And so, you know, 
all these kids playing these like, oh, what's the land? What's the Mitsubishi Lancer Revolution? I've never even heard of that. What's the Subaru, you know, WRX STI or 22B? I've never heard of that either. All of a sudden, you've got all these kids like growing up, lusting after these cars in the video games, and then they turn 25 years old and they're importing them from Japan for seventy thousand dollars. You know, this, this is kind of a huge, <laughs> it's, like, it's crazy, a huge. Isn't it? A huge quantum shift in like automotive enthusiasm for for uh, you know kids of um, like fl- older millennials right. and, and younger Xers. And th- those cars, like the Lancer and the WRX, were born of rally racing. But that's not why they became popular in the U.S. They became popular in the U.S. because of racing games and, and yeah, Fast exactly. and the Furious and the the, the tuner um, uh, culture. And think that about doesn't... and think about how manufacturers all of a sudden really wanted to be part of that i mean up to that point i was like ah, oh, video games that's for kids whatever yeah. but when you think about now how important it is for manufacturers to be represented in various video games well what um, it was the previous the gt2 rs debuted at the forza presentation yeah. they lowered it from the ceiling yeah. like here's the new gt2 rs the yeah. previous gen like somebody's got to do a documentary one day about Forza versus uh, Gran Turismo. I'd love to. Oh, I could, I could, I could. I'd love to listen to a podcast series about that uh, that battle. Because mm-hmm. I, I was a, I'll, I'll say, I mean, I was a Gran Turismo person. A Sony, I was person too at the beginning. For, and then I for to Forza. a long way, I I started with uh, with GT the the very first one. Right. I was like, hey, what's this? And I was like, yeah, this is pretty cool. And then I unlocked the high res GT version. That you could get in in the first Gran Turismo, and that was awesome. And then isn't that where GT2? like the background stuff got like lower res, but the car was high res, higher res? High, yeah, yeah. The the background detail wasn't as important, but it's just the gameplay was a lot smoother. Yeah. Things looked a lot. The frame rates were better. Um, and I was I stayed with Gran Turismo up until, well, I mean, I think GT, I think GT four was probably the highlight. Um, you know, when you start, one. when you got so many tracks, you had the Nurburgring that you could run, um, and Forza was just kind of starting to, to build up speed. And then, I mean, they, they just, they just continually shot themselves in the foot with delays and, yeah. and broken promises. Meanwhile, Forza was just turning the volume up to 11. And that's why I've got the Xbox X out here that I, that I still play with, uh, with, uh, Forza Horizon four, mm-hmm. um, and, and Forza seven and yeah. Bruce, so, since we're talking games. Well, I'm not going to talk games so much today. Games are fun, and I have a whole room of games, and I wish I had could like load this up on my phone and show you my games. I, I, I want to talk to you about my other passion, and that's models. Um, so specifically here, let me reach over. Um, I've got two here. Oh, I've got two here. They are unbuilt currently. And they probably will never be built. So I've got a Messerschmitt oh. and oh, I wow. set up. Look at that. Oh, I that will pay awesome. you anything for those. Um, it, and yeah, they are still in oh. their plastic. You can see. I've never seen that before. Um, you know, I, let, let me just say building. I would pay you $200 is, for those. It's, it's, it's become such a lost art in the digital age. Um, but sitting down to build a, just just a scale thing like this you can be as detailed as you want and it's relaxing and if you love cars the end result can be so satisfying bruce i mean and, i mean you know what i'm talking about yeah and no this one is still i don't know if you can see it is still it's oh, yeah. wrapping uh the toyota ts gt1 tso20 by tamia and, yeah this is that, a that's, a, that's a nice kit yeah um but, and I want people to know, I do actually build models because I can reach over here. This just needs some top coat. It is completed. This is a robot, but not a car, but still. Um, well, you know you're serious when you have a block of foam with sticks in it so that you could put your pieces on to dry. I'm, I'm assuming that's what that is. Well, so quick tangent. The place I spray is in my garage. My garage is not heated. The spray has to be kind of room temperature-ish. I live in Ohio. It's cold. I can't spray right now. Um, so I'm, That's why that's in the house. Gotcha. Right. It is completely done and ready. It just needs a top so, coat, which is what keeps the stickers and stuff on. Can you help me? Because I, I think I am going to buy an RC car soon, and I do want to get an extra clear body, yeah. but I'm so scared about painting it. Will you help me? Sure. 
Yeah. Because that's what I mean. That's what you do with models, right? Well, yeah. you, with the RC cars, I mean, it's a Lexan body. You spray it up underneath, and, and yeah, you I'm just a, so yeah, nervous. You need to get like, a special, like that. a flexible paint. I suck at that yeah. stuff. Anyway, but with these specifically, so the funny thing is, you would think it would be the opposite that robots are like really complicated. Like, I'll grab a piece here. Oh, they're they're totally not. I mean, there's a, there's a reason right. Bruce and this I has are, like are doing this podcast. Metal kinda... attached to it, like <laughs> and I've detailed and stuff like that. This is so much harder. Yeah, it, oh, yeah. It's and you. So, but also so a lot of them I've gotten from my dad. Some of them I bought myself in terms of the cars. But also, I just love these are not photos. Are. These have been painted. Some yeah. artist out there like depicted these and it's just gorgeous that like, you know, you've got these like paintings here on the side. I'm trying to hold yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah. Like, like the-, the engines and stuff like that. And so the box art even of themselves are kind of something you can look at and admire. Um, I found a I, I, I found a Dodge Deora model in my garage a couple of uh, weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago from like my childhood, years and years and years ago that I brought out from my childhood home. And um, I was about to throw it away because the model itself is completely hashed and like not salvageable, but it was the box art that made me reconsider it because it's just so beautiful and so interesting. Like they have this old Dodge Deora mm-hmm. show car, like uh, like a, a lakeside campsite. And it's just like, it's gorgeous. It's completely fake, completely fanciful, but incredible. And I that was what saved that model. Yeah, over art. over the years, I've actually cut out a lot of the box art yeah. from the models. I, I do the same thing, just just because it looks so good. And just real quick, one last thing: I do have like I like in my in my room where I play video games. I do have a display of you know a lot of my Matchbox cars. So oh, on the same <laughs> those way. are still in the package. I have mine set up like that too. Um, so you can see that I you, you I, actually I uh, I have a whole row yeah. of them here. Very cool. Um, one more picture here real quick, like before I let someone else talk. Um, but yeah, so you can see models in the background oh, and it. old matchbox cars. And you can see those were played with, like they've got paint chips and stuff like that. Those are the ones I had since I was a kid, but I also I didn't had get that rid 928. Of them. I had that 928, Bruce. Oh, that one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's like a, it's like a random, like not a, it's not a Hot Wheels or a Matchbox, right? It's like a totally random. Yeah, it's just brand. something. But I, you know, I, I, I love also, it. I couldn't get rid of them, but you know, they got played with. Clearly, you can see kind of the paint chips, especially on these RX seven on the bumper, or yeah. So it, that's where my kind of love starts. Matchbox and and Hot Wheels. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen like some of the stuff on YouTube with with the, with their diecast racing championships where they had these oh, I love inter, those inter, intricate Neff. You so were fun. on you were on 3D. Oh, yeah, Fun yeah, Maker. they named a car after me. They, 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 named, they named a car after you. I have no idea how that happened. Or did, did they, they really? really? I didn't yeah, hear about yes. this. I don't, I don't, maybe I submitted my name like a year ago or maybe somebody else submitted my name, but yeah, I was one of the drivers in you, you uh, the, 3D, one of the drivers, 3D, well, 3D, cool. 3D bot maker die cast. That was uh, right cast. after I started at motor one and I was still kind of like getting to know the team a little bit. And all of a sudden you were the driver of this. And I was like, who is this person who is driving a 3D <laughs> famous. racer? I'm famous. What team did I just join? Oh, my, I was car, like, my car lost like immediately first two races. It was completely out. It, it was a terrible car. But the fact that those videos, I, I mean, that channel has a huge following. It does, yeah. Every video just gets like hundreds of thousands of views. Yeah, and I yeah. found myself just completely oh, enamored with it. Two, I'll, I'll watch it for like two hours to catch up on all the races. And, and to have a setup like that with a track. I mean, when yeah. I have a, when I have a larger house, which hopefully will be coming soon, that uh, I'm going to have a big play area. Um, I'll talk a little bit about my stuff here. Well, I'll start by following up with Bruce and that, I've always been a big modeler. Um, I've got my my ninety four SVT Lightning. Oh, there to, oh, that's a great kit. Thing. I've never seen oh, that. Oh, look at that box art. That's that, that's, box isn't art. that isn't that great? Jesus. Yeah, this, and this is one the of next my, thing. One of my I favorite cars. One of my um, favorite cars of all time too. I love the Lightning. I I I, I have a model of your car. Of, that's your of, car. Yeah. The car that I actually have in the garage. I even put my little license plate on it. Uh, oh, cool. <laughs> that's, that's my little license plate. So I mean. Um, one of the best ones that I really enjoyed building was this 
La Ferrari that uh, I mean, cool. it is, I, I mean, I mean, the Hold doors, the, the, go, the doors go. open up. I don't yeah. know if you can really see in there, but I mean, yeah, this was this was so satisfying to build. And I, I spent several years where I didn't really build anything because I built a lot of these as a kid. And mm -hmm. when you're a kid, it's like, I just want it done. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't want to build it. I just want it done. I yeah, want the right, car. Yeah. So with age, now comes the appreciation of the process. So I, I was able to get a lot better. Building that LaFerrari was just so satisfying. I probably spent a couple months mm -hmm. just, just working on it a little bit. I learned, you know what? When you get to a point where you're feeling like you just you have to finish the step, stop. Because yeah, because if, if you're feeling like, okay, I, I have to get this done, that's when you're gonna make mistakes. It's and, not gonna turn and, out good. And yeah, so I mean I've got I've got plastic models. I mean, you can probably see behind me. I don't know if you can see. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that's that's actually a one twenty fifth scale um <laughs> car carrier that my yeah. father built he is we modeler. need to put a picture of that in the post because it's so impressive well we'll, we'll we'll put it up there my father yeah. was a retired truck driver he drove um he drove uh a nine car ten car car carrier or no no I, th I think he i think he retired before they went to ten car that's that's a scale replica of a ten car um has you would have seen with ford car carrying ford vehicles in the 80s so of course I built 10 125th scale Ford Mustangs <laughs> that, that's loaded. Some of those cars I are like 25 years old when I wow. built them as kids. Some of them are, are just a couple years old. I mean, this, I mean, I mean, this car sits on there. I took this off for the, so yeah, I, I love models. Um, I have a lot of models. One of the things that I'm wanting to have when I get a bigger house and set up my big track is slot cars, because I also, oh, yeah. I also grew up with slot cars and I was pretty fortunate in that I didn't have just small slot cars. Um, my father was big into slot cars in the sixties back when they were doing like one, like one twenty fifth scale slot cars. So mm -hmm. we actually had a big slot car track that I used wow. to, uh, to, to play with and enjoy. And I also grew up with, I don't know if you guys ever heard of this. Yeah. One. Uh I've never US, seen that one. US one electric trucking. It was it was like your typical HO uh, slot car set, but it was trucks. And instead of just having a pin in the front, they had a pin in the front and the back, so you could go forwards and then backwards. And they had, uh, I mean, there were all kinds of different sets that had different things. You could load up pipes and carry pipes. Did they go slower or the did pipes. they go fast? They they generally went slower, but because it was the same type of of. Uh, of slot car track. I mean, you could put, you could put anything on there wow. and, and crank it up and, and go faster. So, I mean, I would have the trucks with like little smoking, the bandit cars and, and mm -hmm. yeah, it's had a lot of that as a kid. I would love to set that back up again. Yeah. Um, my other big, um, I guess it's a hobby. I grew up with transformers and I'm sure a lot of people out there from the eighties remember. Oh yeah. The little, the little, I mean, that's a G1 hot rod that I absolutely adore. And then, you know, the Hasbro and, and all the companies figured out, well, these guys that had these as, as kids, you know, now they're older with some disposable income. And yeah, it's really disposable because they came out with the Masterpiece series oh, that, are, that, are, that are much bigger. They're much more detailed. Yeah. I mean, this that's is cool. this is G1 hot rod as he looked in the cartoon. Much and, better. And, and, they, and and that fully transforms the mass. Oh yeah, one. fully yeah. transforms, and you know the cheap ones are about like a hundred bucks. Um, some of them, I mean, they've they've done like three versions of the original Optimus Prime. And, As they say, take my money. And yeah. it, you know, it's it's I mean it's up to like four hundred some bucks for an, an Optimus Prime now. Yeah, and you I'm and Jason you. Marker of Right Apart, you guys like <laughs> you guys are the masterpiece Transformers masters. Oh yeah, his the back of uh, his 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 collection is is way bigger than mine. I mean this is this is pretty much my collection right here that that uh, we'll, we'll put a link to in the in the uh, podcast article I sure. wrote about this for Motor One. Uh, what was it? Twenty eighteen? Has it been that long? Yeah, oh, twenty eighteen. And, and of course, I, I mean, I set him up doing the YMCA dance because why not? <laughs> I never noticed that. Because they're posable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they can. I mean, they're, they're they're super posable. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's kind of my jam. I, you know what? I think the last time I bought one was 2018. So damn it. Well, time, to, uh, time to buy another one. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm kind of due. I don't know. Do they have a hot Rodimus prime? 
Um, Wasn't that his name? Well, well, technically, this guy was. What happened uh, when Hot Rod became was called was called Hot Rod, right? Um, and in in the Japanese on the Japanese side, they called him Hot Rodimus. Um, and yeah, in the in the eighty six Transformers movie, Optimus Prime dies. Hot Rod gets the Matrix of Leadership. He turns into Rodimus Prime, Rodimus Prime, Rodimus Prime. which was Prime. which was basically this car with like a big Winnebago back on it. Can I just say, um, like, uh, no one makes creative stories like Transformers anymore. Like, who thinks like we're gonna <laughs> have cars that transform into robots that are like human? Like, man, well, our, well, what what you need? What you need? Well, right now it's Pokemon. Because, because I mean, I let, let's be honest. Somebody wasn't sitting around thinking, "I want to make a car that turns into a robot." Somebody was sitting around thinking, "I want to make a toy of, to sell." <laughs> what, what kind of toy exactly? What You're kind right. of toy can You're we right. sell to kids? And I mean, and that I mean, that's really how this all came about. We'll create this product, and then we'll create some sort of television program that sells the product. And God bless my parents; they <laughs> must have just been pulling out their hair. It's like. Why do you want Starscream and this other Thundercracker? It's the same thing. It's just a different color. How many Transformers think, are there? I think in addition to um, to the common threads of like random automotive hobbies that all of us share, it's the other common thread is our parents pulling their hair out every time we ask mm. for a new automotive something or other when we're children. I think that's the other common thread that parents just don't totally 